Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. This is episode number 356. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, guys. So good to be in here talking to you. We're sorry we're a day late. Um, We had part of the chairs for the conference center supposed to show up Monday or Tuesday, and we had our grandsons ready there to help us. Well, they had commitments today, and guess when they showed up? So we're sitting here a little perspiring. (laughs) Oh, but things are things are just falling in, into place they so are. good. They are. So um, we unloaded those chairs. They're safe. They're looking great. Um, Mary picked some beautiful paneling for them to put up front, with it, which they got installed yesterday behind uh, uh, behind the stage. It looks like a reclaimed barn. Yeah, I mean, it just turned out gorgeous. It did turn out gorgeous. It's much cheaper than the uh, reclaimed barn wood, which I just I love the look of that. Um, but we, it's so close to being done. They are. Uh, putting finishing touches on. Um, we've got the rest of the chairs ordered and paid for. Um, they're just on back order, so we're supposed to have them by August. Is that? Yeah, they, they should get them in, I think they said August 9th, and they got four shipments coming in. So even if just one shipment comes in, we're on the top of the Yay, list. Yay, I like that. But the chairs <laughs> uh, are the nice um, chairs like we have here. So we got enough to add with the ones in this in this building to make plenty of chairs for everybody to sit. And um, AV is scheduled to be put in hopefully the end of August, 1st yeah. of September. So everything is just going just wonderful. I've even um, got supplies for the meals that I could um, ahead of time because I know that I don't think the inflation is going to go down. <laughs> I don't think that's going to decrease anytime soon. So I was thinking we better go ahead and get some of these things before there, somebody was estimating it was going to double again by the fall. I don't know if that's true, but I just thought it's it's wise Get to the go flour ahead and, and all those things now, right? And anything that's canned, uh, but it's it's very exciting. I mean, you can feel the presence of the Lord over when there. when we're over there, and and uh, I've been going with Mike to walk some, and uh, it's just yesterday too. Uh, Pastor Neil Patterson, the one that's going to be holding the uh, uh, the conference in Ohio that I'm going to next month. Uh, him and his other guy that uh, Jeffrey that handles the AV was good enough. They spent over an hour just walking me through some things, and uh, I was excited to find out that we don't have to buy another computer because we already have one that I was using for Studio B over there that'll work perfect for everything. And they walked me through because I, you know, <clears throat> when you when you deal with all this stuff, learning figuring out how to put the computer in with all the AV stuff is a little bit new for us to do live feed and everything. And they walk me through the whole thing. They've been so helpful. And it, it's so good in the body of Christ. When <clears throat> brothers that are more experienced, and whenever you go to his church, they have a media room that looks like something out of CBS, mm. just about. They know their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he has, he has a, 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 an engineering background for God called into ministry. And in fact, right now, he's running for governor of Ohio. And uh, God's opened up that door to him. Uh, but to, to, to be able to say, hey, this is your area of expertise. What can you share? That's that's the way the body's supposed to operate. And we were so grateful for what they did yesterday. Yes, that was so helpful, and we really appreciate that. Um, you know, we're we're in a time that is both exciting and almost nauseating. Um, we're so excited about what God's doing. We're hearing reports of of people getting saved in a lot of different places, which is exactly what I've I've thought was going to happen in these yeah. last days. God's going to bring in a great harvest. And at the same time, the level of debauchery has went up two or three more notches. Um, there's so many things going on right now. I uh, wanted to read just a small uh, section of a New York, York Post article. It says, uh, this is from, uh, let's see, City Council member Vicki Palladino. She's a Republican in Queens. It says, I am considering pulling funding to any school in my district that is implementing Drag Queen Story Hour, said this this woman. We are taking hundreds of thousands of dollars out of the pockets of hardworking New York tax, taxpayers to fund a program teaching little children about their gender fluidity. Not on my watch, she says. Good for her. And um, yeah, this, is, this is Pride Month, and so there's been all kinds of things just that you'll hear and it's popping up. Um, 
uh, out of Reddix, it said a professor of ethics at Oslo Metropolitan University in Norway has called to legalize AI-generated child pornography, claiming that pedophilia should be seen as an innate sexuality that requires destigmatization. And Which I, has been the goal all along. Well, and I, I tell you these, you know, you guys know my stand on all this. My heart just goes out to anyone that's trapped in this. I, I just think, you know, they do have those, um, I think that they do have spirits that are with them from the time they're born. So they think this is, is something that, you know, they finally find themselves when they, um, they're, you know, used to, I'm sure people would guard themselves and try to um, sequester those those feelings. Well, now we've uh, had so, so much of the kingdom of darkness infiltrating that they just think it's normal now and you know it's it's like i i said i want so want to expose what the enemy's done to that and see them free and at the same time you have to try to protect these children oh yeah i mean this this is there's so many vile things that that either somebody sent me or i've seen and looked at on uh the websites that are saying this stuff's going on we can't even talk about it. It's that vile. It's that vile, and we've had uh, some of the drag queens as well as some of the teachers involved in this have now come out where they're they're having charges of, of pedophilia that have come out, and it, it's gotten to the place where this is now a mechanism for grooming. It's not not all people in this lifestyle <clears throat> no. are by any means, but it it has given them an open door. Yeah. And I think that there are many people in homosexuality that would be against this part of it, but they've kind of just lumped it all together. Well, they, they have, and what you'll have is you'll have those that are trapped in it, and you have those that are predators. Mm-hmm. And we would need it. to be able to distinguish between the two. Right, that's true. Um, what God was telling me as I was seeking him this last week is that it's, it's time to take this land back out of the evil hands and claim it for the Lord. Yes. You know, and I was reminded of, of Joshua. In Joshua 1.3, it says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Um, and then I wanted to read Joshua 5.13-15. through 15. It says, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the, face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon there standeth is holy. And Joshua did so. And I know I'm emotional, but there was such an anointing when God started talking to me about the captain of the host and how there, Jesus is getting ready to send angels to judge the wickedness. Yes. And we've been waiting for so long because there's so many people trapped. There's so many children trapped. Uh, I mean, darkness is just is just trying to overtake. And I, I'm going to declare this, that most of the people in this nation are not like that. No, they're not. Most of the people in this nation want families. They want um, an income. They don't want to sit around and do nothing. They're hardworking people. They want the American dream, a good job, family, fa- uh, house, car. And so while Satan has done his best to defile the land, and it has been defiled, I believe God is getting ready to send us some help, folks. You know, this is something we've been warning for a while, that when there are times that God comes down to visit and to see, we we see that at the Tower of Babel. We we see that even when when God met with it, came down many times during at Mount Sinai and other times. When God comes down to see, what, what Mary just read is so significant because this was... In a, in a great sense, the burning bush experience for Joshua. Mm-hmm. Take your shoes off because you're on holy ground. There are places, guys, that when God begins to visit, it's going to establish it as holy ground. It will be. 
and the enemy will not be able to conquer it. And that that's one of the things that we're believing not only for this this conference center. This is something that we're believing for the churches of the remnant all across the United States, that Almighty God is going to come and he is going to visit and he is going to establish that as an embassy for the kingdom of God and that it is holy and it will be in stark contrast to everything else around it. Well, you know, some people were in the commentaries were saying that this was an angel, but every other place where there's an angel shows up and the people fall down or whatever, they'll say, stand up. No, this this was he Jesus. He identified himself he, because when he worshipped, he allowed it, and no angel would have allowed no. that. The captain and of the Lord of the host is, is, is Jesus. what we would call a Christophany. Right, it was, it in, was the a, in the Old Testament. And, you know, I don't know that there's another time that that it's happened in the in the modern days, but I can tell you, I know when there's a, an unction in my spirit, Jesus himself is going to command these angels for this specific thing. These angels have been waiting with their arms crossed, waiting for this day yeah. to rescue little children to stop this. And God is getting ready to give the command. I don't know exactly. He didn't tell me a date. He didn't tell me. Um, he was just telling me, be prepared. Uh, you know, and we, we know about the defeat of Ai. They had this great victory at, at Jericho. And there's no telling. You've talked before about Jericho and how the Nephilim had set up these fortified walls and they had babies, sacrificed babies. No telling what kind of, you know, portal that yeah. provided to pull well, demonic all, all, power. All the, and I think it goes into, into what's happening right now because the debauchery that was going on in Jericho, they had rebuilt the walls off of an old Nephilim stronghold that was antediluvian, okay? Because when you go back and you look at the foundational stones, they're monolithic, which is, which is a signature of Nephilim. Everything that's going on in America right now is Nephilim watcher influenced. That they're that they are absolutely trying to destroy society and the putridness of who they are is is beginning to work its way through our society. And we're coming to a Jericho moment and that's a, the, that visitation of the Lord with with Joshua was paramount. That was a pivotal place oh, because man. It, it readjusted the paradigm of Joshua and enabled the walls to come down so they could take the city. That's it. And right, right now, with, with the warfare that's going on, we're about ready to have a visitation from God, not so that we can kick back in our easy chair and say, well, God is taking care of this. It is going to be a paradigm adjustment and an impartation for us to take the land. That's it. And, you know, they had a defeated AI after that great victory, but it was because sin was in the camp. And they didn't consult God on what to do. And so yeah. God had to address that. They had to get rid of, of the sin, sin yeah. so that they can go on and take the land. And it was it was for a great purpose, wasn't it? I mean, these, these things aren't done. These things don't happen for no reason. And I am telling you, I know in my heart that these people have set them up, themselves up, these evil people. Elite thinking that they can do whatever they want, that God, there is no God, that, that there's nothing can stop them. They're getting ready to see stoppage like nothing they've ever dreamed of. What we don't realize is that, that well over a century ago, there was a veneer placed across the top of America. It was a Masonic veneer yeah. that is, in a, in a great sense, a fake America. That is the one that's putting all this putridness. And one of the things that God has begun having me to pray is, God, judge this corporate, veneered America so that you can reveal the true, because there has always been, there's been two destinies for America. One Almighty God wanted, and one the Masons brought with them. That's an occult. And that occult one is that veneer across the top that yeah. needs, that God, God, Almighty God needs to rip it off. Yeah, he does. In the name of Jesus. I looked up, um, I was just kind of looking at where they laid cornerstones, and I I think most cities where in towns where they have a Masonic lodge, probably their city hall, um, city hall court buildings would be. They would have these Masonic cornerstones yeah. in them. I wanted to read. This is from a Masonic website, and listen to the baloney. Now, I'm not speaking against the Masons that that think this is real. 
They, I'm sure most Freemasons think it's a wonderful organization. It's all godly. They don't know, you know, the trap and the, the depths of it. They read their own books. But listen to what they say. Physical cornerstones used in ceremonies in which Masons are erecting buildings traditionally show the date, the name of the Grand Lodge, the Grand Master, and the Masonic emblem. Cornerstones have been part of the construction of dedication of many federal buildings and seats of state government since the beginnings of our country. Brother Benjamin Franklin while Grandmaster of Pennsylvania established the tradition beginning with the cornerstone laying of the State House in Philadelphia, and Brother George Washington laid the cornerstone of our nation's Capitol building. Today, Freemasons around the country are proud to carry on the tradition that our forefathers began centuries ago. We are also proud to uphold the truth and the moral characteristics associated with the cornerstone and understand the necessary sacrifices we must make to build our lives and communities. Such sacrifices in pursuit of character and truth are necessary to live into the promise of its symbolism and our degrees. And you know what is so sad about this? The very things that they uphold, that they believe that they're striving for, the truth, moral characteristics, they have bowed their knee at an altar that will pull them the total opposite direction. It's a trapezoid altar, so it's the altar of Nimrod. And the, the, the very first ceremony that they go through, they're basically ask, they're basically saying, I want light, I want illumination, and they, they bow at, a, at, a, at a, an occult altar to where it's done by Lucifer. And, and, you know, a lot of these guys that, let's say they're just blue lodge, they don't, they don't go any deeper. They don't even read their own books. If you'd read Morals and Dogma, or you would read uh, oh, Manly yeah. P. Hall. It's pretty clear. <laughs> uh, Manly P. Hall said that when a mason uh, perfects his craft, that he has the seething uh, powers of Lucifer thro- flowing through his hands. They don't know, but what, what is so significant, and Chris Pinto in, in his DVD, Riddles and Stone Documents, this, that that cornerstone ceremony and i think it uses corn and oil and i can't remember if it uses wine or there were several yeah. elements it's it is it is weed, a, i think it is an ancient ritual dedicating it to baal and so baal becomes the god over let's say they do it over a courthouse so he becomes the god over the justice it becomes the god over uh over let's say city hall so all governments he set up as the principality or the god over that and mary there are a lot of the old line denominational churches that masons set the cornerstone of those yeah, churches they sure did and there are many southern baptist churches that have pastors that are masons and yes. they have been for many decades uh, they had a picture of a masonic cornerstone laying ceremony and they have something i i've obviously never been to one of these ceremonies but they hold they've got these four called burning tapers and they put it over the the person that's doing the ceremony's head well we know that the light of freemasonry is lucifer yes and so i mean any any building any government that is established on this is established on a pagan foundation it is and so we've we've got to go you know the way that i i look at it is if we can have people in every town like we've done our our uh, cities where we work here and uh, where we live, Marshfield and Seymour, and Diggins doesn't have one. I think that's just included in the Seymour Masonic Hall. Yeah. But we've asked forgiveness for the sins done mm. by Freemasonry, the sins of the laying of the cornerstones. And there's more than the city hall building. We've noticed several around. And, and I think that when we ask forgiveness for that and plead the blood of Jesus, it breaks the occult power of it. And then I think we can start the process of, of just claiming the land, just like Joshua did, just, and take that scripture and say, every place the sole of my foot treads. Absolutely. I'm claiming it for Jesus. Because this is the way they take the land. I remember back in, in, the, in, in the 1990s, we were working with Dr. J. Hurls up in, up in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, there was a whole bunch of churches realized that out in front of City Hall they had um, kind of like a... Uh, a a porched area. I mean, you know how you'll have the grand entrance with all the, uh, uh, with all the granite and all this stuff. Well, they had that outside. In the middle of that was this huge bronze Masonic uh, symbol that was on the sidewalk. It was, and and they began going around that area praying and everything. And one and one day, <laughs> Jay noticed it was in the newspaper, and it, you had to work because it was set in granite. And it was, it was probably two feet across, two, two or three feet across. Somebody went and pried it up with a crowbar and stole it. <laughs> and they all, and the Christians all looked at that, that 
God was breaking that because that was that was like the seal. That's, that, that, that it was the entrance to all the power over all of Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And guys, the, I mean, the, the spiritual warfare with this is real. Yeah, uh, and, and and don't do that lightly. No, you know, I think they had some trouble after they yeah. they did that. You have to be commissioned by commissioned God. by God and know exactly what you're doing, and you have to have been working for a while to make sure the sins out of your life. Yeah, you because know, if if there, if there is one hole in your armor, the, the principality will oh, find these, it. Oh, these are these are connected all together to the highest principalities, which would be in Washington D.C. Yeah, uh, Doctor Benefield out of Oklahoma City. They have a they have a uh, uh, a prayer of divorcing Baal because mm-hmm. the Masons have said Baal is the god over America. Yeah, and <clears throat> I know when they first did that. Did you remember back here a couple of years ago? There was like a, a an earthquake that actually cracked the top of the Washington Monument. Well, Mary, that was within two days after they had representatives from all 50 states that divorced Bayall right, right there in D.C. Right. And the next thing you know, they got to repair the Washington Monument right. because I, I think it affected something in the spirit realm. Yeah, you know, obviously God's so much more powerful than this. Yes. But, but they've done it in such a way and got people in such shape that they aren't, in, they aren't able to stand the backlash of it. You know, when you stand as a Christian and you know your authority and you pray these prayers, it breaks it. Yes. But, but boy, you better have the doors covered and you better know what you're doing because that's when a lot of people have been destroyed. You know, a lot of people go to pagan things and just go in there and think that they can go in there and, and uh, um, not be prepared for, for a backlash from going into those places. And, man, there's, there's some serious backlash. Yeah. And not only do the principalities not forget, but I mean, even those in the occult, uh, that there are there are doctrines within the occult. If somebody does something like that, that uh, you were to pursue them even at two or three generations, and so that's why holiness and walking in the things of God, and as we move forward, is not something that you do occasionally. It's not something you do when we quote have revival. It's something for the remnant that is a constant state every day, of readiness every day. And, and, you know, that's what we've been doing here. Um, I think something where I originally was born had to be broken first because whatever the lights in the sky were and, and that stuff, that, that was a central point for something. And then when we came up here, um, you know, Marshfield proved to be um, very high-level witchcraft. You don't see it on the surface anymore, and you did in that town I was raised. Well, but it's the but highest then, point in the Ozarks. But then Springfield is something else. Yeah, you know they got the That's a shrine whole mosque level. up there, and um, God's given me certain prayers to say. But I I know not to cross authority lines, and I know when to say things and pray led by the Holy Spirit. But but that's that's coming. Yeah, you you can't, God's going to take that city. You can't assume anything. It has to no. be a direct commission from God. When you now ground warfare, like when you're dealing with demons and stuff. That we can do any time. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you deal with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, you can come against that. that. That can only be done if we're going to do it directly, by direct commission of God. Otherwise, we seek the Father for him to send angels to war against yeah. them. And the good news is, is I think that the, the prayers have made such a difference. That's why God's taken me back to the commander. Yeah the captain of the host, is because I think things had to get set in order. There had to be certain thing, things broken here, broken there, uh, land claimed for this to happen. You know, there's there's order to things, and there's, there's especially with this, because I've told you before, I think there's so many people hooked to this. You know, it's a Babylonian system. Uh, I've always known that I couldn't step out of Babylon until I see... Um, that Hillary Clinton has lost her power, and I mean, I mean across the board, and and everything that's happened has to be reckoned for. You know, I'm talking courts and whatever that is. I'm in here because they hook me to it, and if they hook me to it, just like, you know, when when we send our tax money in, we send the blood of Jesus with it, and say yes. we forbid this money to be used for ungodly purposes, and we ask Father that you would send the blood of Jesus over that connection, and and take down every evil thing that doesn't line up with your kingdom and that's the way i do with babylon yeah is i send the blood of jesus into that every day and i say you hook me to it so here it comes here comes the blood of jesus here comes the name of jesus over the top of you that you will not continue this evil and you will not do this to any more children 
You know, they always tell you, like with computers, don't use a strange USB drive that you don't know about because there could be a virus on it. Jesus said the kingdom of God is like leaven. Yeah. And so you charge me taxes, you just plug me in. And if I pray, it's going to affect you, not the other way around. And the same same way with the way they connected the trauma children. Yes. They connected us. They put us on the, the astral plane. So I have a connection to that that I bind it, that it cannot affect me, but I send the blood of Jesus into that every day and say, you will fall. Babylon will fall, fall, fall. All of the evil is going to come down. And and what the purpose of that is, is to return this nation to a land that God can use again. You know, as, as I was unpacking, as we were unpacking chairs and sweating like crazy this morning, one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, when, when we go back, when, when Trump was first running for office and we began telling people to pray, let everything hidden be revealed. I think everything that has transpired since then is, is the remnant began to pray that to include him not getting reelected so that we could see the evil of everything that they have done. And, and, and all the debauch, all this stuff is coming out that we're aghast at. That's well, sickening. that's exactly what we prayed. Well, and it's, everything and all this stuff has always been here. It has, but, and it, but it, it was so hard for anybody to imagine it was possible. Yes. That's why years ago, guys, I just thought, God, I'll do everything you tell me to do. I'll stand where you tell me to, to stand. I'm going to pray just like you told me to pray. I'm going to believe what you told me to believe. But I can't wait to see the day when other people can see this. Yeah. <laughs> And there was just, just a report just came out, and, and what's interesting is they're trying to form the, the Bureau of Truth right out of 1984. And any, the definition, or there's, there's, you always hear this word sometimes on the news when they call somebody a fascist. By definition, fascism is when industry and government work together for a political agenda. That's fascism. Look it up in Webster's Dictionary. That is the basic definition. And so in this Ministry of Truth, the tech companies are now going to work in concert with the government, and the two things they were concerned about was the jab and the and the last election. That of course it was there was nothing wrong here. Why? Well, criminals will you know it's like you protesteth too much. That they're they're and, they're, and they were going to say, listen, if we catch people doing this, we are then going to use law enforcement and political pressure or power to silence. American citizens. That's the whole reason we had the Revolutionary War to begin with that and then trying to take away the guns that caused the Revolutionary War. That's why we have the First and Second Amendments. And so we have the very government that claims to promote that, trying to, to sequester it within its own people because they're afraid when the truth comes out, they're all going to jail. Well, in a a very good legal system they would yes <laughs> but we they control the they, legal system it's they be have God's compromised divine. too many judges they knew what they were doing they knew if they got a hold of the judicial system they'd have it yeah but you get no justice there is there is <laughs> there's a court on. higher than theirs there is the most high god yeah. who is the judge of all and it won't be hard you know how the bible says uh talking about babylon come out of her my people so you don't you know partake in in the curses and things like that it won't be hard to come out of Babylon once people see it. We're just still in the exposure phase and the, in the breaking of the occult power phase. Yeah. And then once it's exposed, your average American that has no clue that this stuff has been going on will say, oh, my word, how did we not see this? And they will gladly come out of Babylon. But you can't come out of this Type, this modern day Babylon, unless the occult power is broken and you can see it. So that's what we're in the phase of. It's like trying to get people to see the matrix, you know. That's exactly right. Yeah. And it's not easy to see. And I understand that. I used to couldn't have seen it for anything. If somebody tried to explain this to me, even 40 years ago, I would have went, how much whiskey you been drinking? <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so difficult to see. And your mind fights it too. You know, it's that techno sorcery you're talking about. They've used technology. They've used all these things. But God's raised up people that they hook to it so that the blood of Jesus can go in. And the blood of Jesus will serve as a virus to tear it down. Yeah. And they, I think they count on cognitive dissidents, too, that you just say, simply can't believe. Well, these are the people we voted for. Surely they couldn't be against us and all these different things. 
uh, there, there is a wake up call coming. We're getting ready to get a cup of, of Holy ghost caffeine. That's getting ready to wake up a whole lot of people. Well, and you know, the, the elite have sown a deadly virus, haven't they? Yes. They're, they're continuing to, to plan to sow deadly virus. So what is the blood of Jesus going to do to their system? The Bible says, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And they even prophesied this in those old crazy movies that they put out, the sci-fi movies, War of the Worlds, uh, that modern-day War of the Worlds movie that they had. It was the, wasn't it the virus? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was the common cold that killed the aliens. Yeah. And so, so th- that's what God told me years ago, and I didn't understand it at the time. He said, he said the spirit-filled people will be the virus. Yes. <laughs> and so, so let's just keep praying into it. Let's just keep saying, you know what, Babylon? You're not going to rule over this nation. You're not going to continue this. You're going to be exposed, and there will be justice. And the commander, yeah. the captain of the host, is going to be the one leading the charge. We don't We don't go into a store. We don't go into a restaurant unless we plead the blood of Jesus over That's it. That's it. Uh, and we take authority and say, we're claiming this. We're walking in here. And I've gone as far as, you know, on my car. Uh, those tires right now are, are, are the other tread of my shoes. <laughs> That's right. right. And I can, I can do it at 70 miles an hour, glory to God, and I'm That's claiming right. everything as I go down the highway. Yeah, there's been times when God's had me go to specific places in Springfield and pray, and I just do it led by the Holy Spirit on what to do when um, because he knows everything. I know very little, but I know that if he tells me to do it, I'll do it, and he knows I'll do it. Yeah, he He's told me things that one day I'm going to speak, and I don't want to speak, but I will. Yeah. I will when he tells me to. I will declare it. I will stand in faith believing that he's going to do it. And we're getting closer and closer to that time. And that's I'm so excited because I know when I was so excited when he said took me to the story of Joshua because I knew Jesus was the captain of the host. Yes. And I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, yes. send your armies. Send your armies to help us, Lord. We'll do what you tell us to do. Send your armies. We need angelic help on this one. Any time that God has moved, he has always first stirred expectation within the hearts yeah, of his people. Old right. Testament, New Testament, during the times of Jesus, the expectation of Messiah was at an all-time high. And because God stirred the people that they were they were looking, and uh, the, the knee-jerk reaction that I would hadn't connected all the dots to this in an interview that I, I did with uh, Rabbi Eric Walker, did you know that the Jewish community does not consider the book of Daniel a prophetic book? It is a writing. It is a part of the Ketuvim and not the Navaim. They they will not because of their because they rejected Messiah and so much of Daniel is about Messiah. <laughs> they had to reject they, their they, own book. <laughs> they had to reject it as a prophetic book. He wasn't a prophet, he was just a writer. And uh and some, of the, and some of the things that could, because, I mean, the, the understanding of Daniel, we look at many of the uh, pseudepigrapha books that were in the Second Temple period, uh, Enoch, uh, Jasher, Jubilees, all that, all that fed that, uh, and it, it was coming in within, within Jewish consciousness, uh, it was social consciousness, it was being sometimes, you know, it was kind of going, well, it's, 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 because they hadn't really established the full canon yet. And so we, we, we they, many of them considered it scripture. That's why you see Jesus alluring to it, but Paul and Jude quotes from it and, and all this because it was, it was still that, that, that Old Testament canon had not been fully did, and, and the rabbis took all those because it caused this whole Jesus problem. They put them over here and said, no, it's not going to be canon. But God used all these things as instruments to stir that expectation. It was the same thing. The expectation was high when Moses showed up. The expectation, anytime there has been a visitation from God, uh, we we even look at the uh, the turn of the, the the 20th century. It was the great disappointment that caused the the, the second great awakening. That because of that, they begin to really stir. We our expectation right now should be through the roof about Jesus is going to come and he is going to visit. Yes. He is going to empower. He is going to judge. We're we're talking 2022, 2023, and it's going to absolutely put a wrinkle in everything the enemy has planned because right. God is not done with His people yet, and He has a plan. If he's if we stand in faithfulness to God, He's going to cleanse the land, and there's going to be a great recompense for the evil that has been done. Yes, you know people that have been sitting waiting for years, thinking, "God, why are you letting this go on?" 
watch what he's getting ready to do. We need to cry out for a visitation. We need to cry out for justice. You come and you it. judge. And, That's it. Uh, and guys, one of the things that has concerned me over in the past, because, you know, there have been times that uh, historically in, in my own life when I would like preach on the book of Revelation or talk about judgment, all of a sudden all the Christians get sheepish. The Bible says the righteous rejoice in judgment. Ooh, I do. The thing, you know what, you know why those believers were sheepish? Because they ain't right with God. Well, and, and they and and their spirits knew that they were violating the ways of God, and they didn't have it under the blood. If if all my life is under the blood, then you're safe. You're safe, and I mean it. It takes it takes thirty seconds to pray, but it takes a, a lifetime to live it out because it's minute by minute, it hour is. by hour, keeping my life in harmony with, with the, the blood of Jesus. Yeah the name of Jesus and the word of God. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us that gives us an anointing that we can do that very right. thing. Well, if, if you hate pedophilia, if you hate child trafficking, if you hate mind control, then hold on. I hate adult trafficking. I hate all kinds of I trafficking. hate it all. And if you hate that, and your life is where it's supposed to be, you will rejoice in judgment because yes. it's the only hope for this nation. Yes. Babylon's got to be ripped out. Yes. It's got to fall and be ripped out. Not only this nation, but the Bible says when Jesus comes back, there are going to be sheep nations, plural. Mm-hmm. Ones that did not follow the Antichrist. Ethnic groups and, and regional areas that were considered like nations that did not follow the Antichrist. And that's what we got to believe for our areas, that God's going to rip this stuff out. Because it's not just here in the moment. It's for now until the Lord physically comes back and ruling and reigning. What he's going to do that we need to be a part and that we're going to see a foundation set for that. Yeah. That if the Lord tarries... This next generation can pick it up on our shoulders and take it because of what we did right now. I don't want to be, look back, because when I look back at the last generation, they're the ones that let Roe versus Wade pass. They're the ones that let prayer be taken out of school. They let all these stupid things happen Mm -hmm. that should have never happened in this country. But they sat there and and let it happen. We need to be the generation that says, it stops here. It stops now. now. I'll not Mm -hmm. tolerate it. I invoke the kingdom of God that everywhere I go, I'm I'm, I'm creating an atmosphere of the kingdom of God around me. I'm no longer satisfied with playing churchianity. I I am going to see the kingdom established everywhere that i am that's it that's it and we're gonna see it happen i don't have any doubt we he wouldn't have provided the funds for this conference center if we weren't you know we we didn't want this in our flesh we just bowed the knee and said father whatever you want i I was actually (laughs) laughing the other day as i was walking over there because i have gone from one side of the meter to the other side of the meter i went from Great disappointment. Oh, no, you want us to do that, Lord? Or, oh, I'm getting so excited now. You know, it's, just, it's like the meter's now pegging the other way because God's giving the vision. He's giving the understanding. And he's filling and the place. He is filling the place. He is filling it with his presence. And, and I'm believing we're going to have such great folks come from all over. You know, we could have people representing every state, other nations. We get in there together and start repenting for the sins. Do you know what that would do with that many people? Coming in one accord. Yeah. I, w- I want prayer warriors. I want praisers and worshipers. Mm-hmm. See, we can send the virus. If you're hooked to Babylon, and, and everybody's been hooked to it, if you're, if you're hooked to Babylon, no, hopefully not like I was hooked to it, but you're, if you're hooked through just where your position and what they've done. You know, it's like Randy Conway talks around. Man, they, they took us. Yeah. Uh, so if you're hooked to Babylon. But I've got a greater connection. Well, Kingdom. and it's just like a computer. We start praising the Lord and say, okay, Babylon, here it comes. Yeah. Here it comes. Here comes the anointing to tear you down. And I've told Mike Spaulding when we get here, I said, listen, we're going to have a schedule. That's where, you know, you know, 90-minute session, 90-minute session, break. Mary's fixing wonderful food. Mary speaks. And, you know, we're, we're having all these things. The minute that God begins to really move, you take that schedule, you wad it up into a little ball, and you throw it on the side. Yeah. And we'll have, we'll have, I'll make sure there's provision there to where if we're going too long past a mealtime, uh, I'll have it set up where Steph knows what to do 
Keep where, it warm. Well, keeping it warm, but there may be kids need to eat. Yeah. You can't take babies, yeah. you know, and not. So we'll we'll have everything lined out. But it's just I, I'm going to have a big, big notebook by the time this is over, and it's going to step one, step two, because the protocols I know exactly of what Mary to do. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's a way to do this that it's going to flow, and the Holy Spirit will show us how. That's right, and so and we are, and even though we're not going to do podcasts the next two two weeks, we're going to be busy, but we're going to make a, a video. video of the conference center. We're going to walk you through it and show you all of it. I'm even and going to show you the bathrooms because nobody's been in has used those new ones. They're just sparkly oh, they're, clean. <laughs> they're pretty pretty bathrooms. And so, and uh, we're we're so excited. And this time, I'm not going to try to use that stupid gimbal thing to where it's not going to be flipping <laughs> yeah. around. I don't want I'm not going to make anybody dizzy. I'm just going to walk it through with my iPhone. And we're we're just so excited. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for the prayers. We couldn't have done it without the prayers. We couldn't have done it without your uh, donations. Thank you so much. And I, you know, every day we're praying, Father. I specifically say all the blessings back to those that belong to you, multifold in every area of their life. I pray that every day. And I am believing that God's going to do it because there there is a blessing for those that give to God's work. There is. And this is God's work. I mean, this is we are just caretakers and doing what he says, but this is God's God's building. Yeah. He knows well how to protect it. He knows well how to fill it. Yeah, this and this is literally, God told me this is literally an embassy for the kingdom of God. I believe it. And that that's what we're we're gonna dedicate it. And uh we don't know what was said the church that was there before, so we're We've been canceling anything that, that could have been done or said or that's ungodly, and we're going forward. Yeah, we are, and as soon as we get on the other side of, of, of this rest period where I'm going to, me and the grand boys are going to start on working on the outside, getting some of the oh, uh, the gardens that. all shaped and up. Me and, and Steph and are going on the done. inside. <laughs> We've got yeah. so many things over here that are so beautiful that we're just going to take over there. Um, it's empty out the building, baby. It's okay. That's that's what we're going to do. Just leave me a desk to work on over here when I'm <laughs> over here. But uh, just just so excited, uh, God's just giving us giving us downloading more every day. Um, I've got a finally got a fresh anointing to write again. So yeah. the the kingdom uh, warriors getting ready to move forward. Well, and he's lost over forty pounds, guys. Thank you for praying for him. Yes. We ask you to pray. God sent an answer, and it's working. He's walking every day. And, um, I like the way uh, they they figured out because they they calculated the muscle and how much more the muscle weighs yeah. in the water. So I've actually lost seventy pounds of fat. Well, you you look so much better. I mean, your color's better and everything. And we both have to be strong people to have unloaded those chairs. Well, I told I told Mary, I said if this would have been back in March, I'd have got one chair off and I'd have been done. <laughs> I cannot go anywhere other than home to take a shower because I had sweat dripping off me. It's so hot and the humidity's high. But I was just praising God because I thought, look at these chairs you paid for (laughs) he's provided everything and uh we're gonna have the rest of them we're gonna i'm I'm just so looking forward to seeing everybody oh that i am just getting so excited there's so many people that i've talked to by email or on the phone and i can't wait to hug their necks it's just gonna be like family and uh we're gonna have a good old family time so we're gonna (laughs) in the lord yes it's it's gonna be awesome guys we love you guys uh we'll see in a couple weeks now while we're gone uh, over the two weeks, we're, we're, we're going to try to get that video. And I want them to get a few more things done before we do the video. Uh, but you guys are going to be excited. And, you know, when you compare it to what it did look like, it's like a completely different yeah, It building. just looks like a brand-new building from yes. the inside. And we're going to power wash the outside so it matches. You know, there's some um, – Debris on the outside of the, the siding that we well, need to wash down. Always on the north side, you get the mold yeah. growing and everything. We're going to get all that off and get it all sparkly. It'll be party. <laughs> and painted in places. And Guys, we love you. Uh, we're praying for you. Just know that Jesus is ruling and reigning. And, and just work on having your expectation high. Have confidence in the authority that we have in Christ. Draw closer to him. Draw closer to the word. And know that the enemy is destined to be underneath your feet. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hi, friends. Pastor Mike Spaulding here to announce the Go Therefore 2022 conference. We are all witnesses to what has happened to America. Wickedness has overwhelmed our land. It is time for the body of Jesus Christ to come together and raise up the banner of our King. Now is the time for the Ecclesia to make our voice heard. We must bind the strong man in order to reclaim our land. Joining us this year to bring this much-needed clarion call 
are the following speakers. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. James Spence, founder of Operation Heal America. Dr. John Diamond, host of America Unhinged on Brideon TV. Kenny C., host of The Rock with Kenny C. Derek and Sharon Gilbert, authors and hosts of award-winning programs on Skywatch TV and the PTL Network. Dr. Michael Lake, author of award-winning books, founder of Biblical Life College and Seminary, and host of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. David Hevner, author, accomplished filmmaker and producer, director of The Last Evangelist TV series. Carl Gallops, senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and a top 60 Amazon best-selling author. Casper McLeod, pastor of Upper Room Fellowship, author, songwriter, guitarist, and portrait artist. Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Rick Hidalgo from the C2K Report. They'll provide a timely teaching on the steps you must take to protect yourself and your family from Babylon. Coach Dave Daubenmeyer from Pass the Salt Ministries. Neil Peterson, pastor of Harvest Revival Center and current candidate for governor of Ohio. Tom Dunn, Through the Black Ministries. And of course, myself, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Registration is now open at the conference website, gothereforeconference.com. GoThereforeConference.com. Registration is still only $59. A recommended hotel is the Best Western Dayton Northwest in Englewood. The hotel is a short 20 minutes from the Dayton International Airport and the conference venue. Mention Go Therefore Conference for the special rate of $89. Book your rooms now as they will sell out. Go Therefore 2022 Conference, reclaiming the land, binding the strongman. I'll see you there. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.